Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Hands-On Finances, with me, Donna G. On this channel, we focus on budget-related content that's accessible for everyone. Please subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos that I'm making weekly. So today's video is another life update. We're going to go over um, a recap of the refrigerator because there's been some updates with that. Job offers that I've been given that are on the table and some more spending we've had to do recently. So let's get into it. Okay, so first thing that's on the agenda is the refrigerator recap and update. So originally we thought we were going to be spending just about four thousand dollars after last week's video and um, the refrigerator was to be delivered on Saturday and it was of course right during nap time for the little guy of course and um, we had to pay we knew this going into it but I just didn't figure it into the cost when I did the last video um, the retail price of the refrigerator was $3,389. We got the extended warranty to add an additional four years onto the one year that came with it for $399. So basically $100 each year for the warranty. Taxes came out to be $303. Install charge is $75 to the delivery uh, people. And the haul away of the old refrigerator is $20. And then we gave them a tip of $30 to split between them. Um, I would have given more, but that's all the cash I had on, <laughs> on hand. But it was last Saturday, and it was up here in Western New York. It was crazy windy and snowy, and it was freezing. And these two guys were working their butts off, and um, I wanted to give them something. <laughs> <clears throat> then you'll see here that we had $145 that we spent at Home Depot. And this is because the refrigerator didn't fit into our cabinet space, despite measuring multiple times. And we knew the configurations of both the refrigerator and the space, but as you can see, we had to take off the cabinet doors above the refrigerator. And then my husband had to um, cut off about a half inch of wood of that lower cabinet to make it fit. So that was kind of frustrating. Um, but we started, I started off just using a um, sander to see if we could get it sanded enough to, you know, squeeze it in. But it, that was going to take forever and it made a total mess of our kitchen and our first floor of our home. So that was disappointing. So then my husband was like, okay, let's just go to Home Depot and get the tool that we need which was some type of saw and blade, and that ended up costing $145. So the grand total was $4,360. Originally, we went in thinking we were going to be spending about $2,000, so we more than doubled our budget for that. But we have it on hand, and we'll be paying that off. But, you know, it's, when you're buying anything that might have an installation fee, a delivery fee, or, you know, life happens, and... These things pop up and despite us measuring and them telling us it will fit, it didn't. I think it was the um, the level levelers on the bottom of the refrigerator, um, the legs that come with that, I think that's what set the difference and whatever reason those weren't in the measurements. But we made it work finally. We got it all in there and it works for perfectly and it's beautiful and we absolutely love it so but it was kind of a pain in the butt to get it to that point <laughs> next thing on the agenda is job offers so if you watch my previous video life update you'll see that i was offered a senior residence manager position of a group home facility here locally um i was going to be compensated fifty thousand dollars it's actually hourly position, but um, I did the math and it ends up being like just under $50,000. Um, the schedule for this one, 
berries. So it's a group home, so they're open 24 seven. Granted, I wouldn't be working evening or late into the evening, but I could work 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. and then, or 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. So, or anywhere in between there. If one of the managers called out, I might be called in. Um, there'd be some weekends and evening work, obviously. And um, obviously there's no remote option because I have to physically be at the home. This is just a job comparison breakdown of the two positions that I've been offered. Additionally, I've been offered an adaptive technology specialist working with visually impaired people. And this is one of the jobs that I was talking about in the previous video that I was excited and waiting to hear back. And then I did email them saying, hey, I have another offer. Um, do you want to, are, are you interested? I'm interested, you know, and I didn't hear anything back. That was like on Thursday and then I got a phone call um, Tuesday from them saying, hey, we'd like to offer you the position. I didn't find out that the, what the salary was and everything until the following day. Um, and I accepted, or before I accepted anything, I obviously wanted to know what the details were. Um, and they said it would be 55,000, nine to five weekdays only. And um, when I'm not meeting with clients that I have the option to work at home. So there is a remote option. And these were the, you know, salary is a big part of the comparison when I'm making a decision and schedule, obviously. I have a three-year-old son, and I would like to be there for bath time and bedtime and spend some time with my family on the weekends and have a similar schedule to my husband. And at the end of the day, I ended up accepting the adaptive technology specialist position. Um, it was more in my line of work and something that I'd be really interested in. A lot less hassle and like running around um, than the senior residence manager position. So yeah, I ended up accepting that position. But if you already know this, I already had accepted the senior resident manager position. So that left me in a bit of predicament. I um, contacted the HR person at the group home and explained, um, I, I Googled how to quit a job before you started. <laughs> and there was like a template that I copy and pasted basically saying, Thank you for your interest in me and taking the time to offer me this position, but um, I've recently been offered something that's more in line with my future goals and um, yada, yada, yada. And they responded saying, no problem, we totally understand. It's something that happens all the time in HR, I'm sure. So yeah, I'll be starting the Adaptive Technology Specialist on the 21st of March, which is super, super exciting. Um, I have some experience working with visually impaired people. I've, I've mostly worked with deaf people. So this is kind of a bit of a pivot, but I think it's going to be a fun one, honestly. Now, blank screen, because I didn't make anything for this. I just added it last minute. I'm thinking about becoming a cash spender. Now, um... I started my journey at the start of the pandemic, basically, and no one was really using cash at that point. And um, I just had always used our debit cards and that's worked for us. And I noticed that there has been a lot of miscellaneous spending and I'm thinking about going to become a cash spender. Um, I do already have the Budget Mom Filofax wallet that I got in her bundle from 2021's. Um, that I bought from her in 2021, but I'm going to need some cash envelopes to stuff it with. And so if you know of anyone that sells or makes cash envelopes on Etsy or website, please tag them below in the comments because I would love to support, you know, another fellow budgeter. And, um, but yeah, if you have anyone that would like to, you know, that I could support or look at their, their content or, their Etsy shop, I'd really would love to do that. So please comment below and tag them and I'll take a look and hopefully I'll be buying some envelopes soon. So that'll be interesting. We'll see where that goes. I've never been a cash spender, so it makes me a little bit nervous, but I'm also kind of excited to see how it varies. And then lastly, 
we've done some serious spending. Again, not, not as bad as the um, refrigerator purchase, but we moved into this house in November and we threw away our old dining set that my husband had from back when he was in college. His college days, it was half broken and we just didn't want to bring it with us. So we've been living off of like plastic folding tables basically and um, metal chairs for the last November, December, January, February. So about four months now. <laughs> um, and we've kind of, we were thinking about do, getting like a real solid wood table and, you know, buying quality furniture for this home. That's what we really wanted to set out doing. And this is, you know, our home for the next 10, 20, possibly 30 years. So we wanted to get good quality furniture and items. However, we have a three-year-old and he likes to paint and draw and scribble and I just don't want to have to like always be worrying about rings on the um, table and things like that. So we just we opted to go with a cheaper dining set that I got off of Wayfair. Um, it was on sale for President's Day. I got it for seven hundred and sixty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. There was sixty one dollars, sixty dollars cents, sixty dollars and sixty cents in taxes, and the total was eight hundred and thirty one dollars and fifty nine cents. And we also decided to do the three-year protection plan with it. Because I did see some reviews that, um, I mean, honestly, it had pretty good reviews. 4.4 4 out of 5, 724 reviews. few people were disgruntled, but, you know, it's going to happen no matter anything you buy. And I decided to just, it was it was 80 bucks, basically. So what's, you know, the damage it had, anything happens to it. And then three years, we can get new chairs or a new table out of it. And it'll last us a little bit longer. So I thought it was worth the warranty. Um, we should be getting it the first or second week of March. It says it was shipped. I'm not sure exactly when it will get here, but um, I'll be building that myself, which will be fun. And it's kind of a farm style theme that we're going for. Just simple and basic. Seat six people has the bench that my husband wanted. And yeah, that's a spending we did last week. So that totaled to $911.50 for the table. So I was hoping to be under $1,000, and we are. Because I know that a real dining room table can be a few thousand dollars. And we just thought that this one will suffice for the time being for a few years. But yeah, I think that's everything for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember to please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.